Amen. Let's go to the Word this morning, see what we can find. We're in a little series, actually a big series, life-changing series. It's called Change My Mind. you got people wanting to change your mind all the time. They think if they show you enough TV commercials, you know, you'll be this way or that way or the other way. It's just crazy. Amen. And uh, people try to buy you, buy you, so you'll change your mind. Families do that. I mean, it's crazy. We're always trying to, to get people to do what we want. You know, and uh, so we live in that kind of world, been that way for a while. And uh, you have an adversary, the devil, who really wants to do that in your life. And then over here stands Jesus. Actually, he's seated at the right hand of God the Father, and he ever lives to make intercession for you. And he's given you his word, and he's not left you and me alone as believers in Christ. We have the Holy Spirit of the living God who is the paraclete, the one who comes alongside, not to make us flop like a chicken, but to help us in our life, to comfort us, to lead us, and so that we can fulfill our mission, which is to see other people come to Christ. Amen. To let our light so shine, to love. And so there's this big battle going on. It's a battle for the mind. And boy, is it, is it going on royal right now. Amen. At least we see it in our country. Yes or no? Amen? Big battle going on. I mean, it's like no holes barred now. Okay? And it used to be subtle. Now it's clear as crystal. Y'all hear me or not? Am I losing you? Okay? And I'm a conservative. I'm a conservative Christian. What does that mean? Well, I believe the Scriptures. I believe what they teach. If I don't understand something, that's my fault. I don't, I don't blame God. If I do, I'm an idiot. Got it? That's the way I am. Okay, I believe Jesus is the only way to God the Father. What about all them other ways? Here's a conservative Christian. Dead end. You understand plain English, yes or no? And that might not be you, but that's where you're at this morning. You're in a church like that, that believes God's Word. Amen. What about when you're wrong? You still believe God's Word? I still believe it. Guess who's wrong? I am. When I screw up, do the wrong thing, guess who did the wrong thing? And I still do. Still struggle. But that's who I am. And uh, that's who I want to be. And so there's this battle going on. We're either going to have the mind of Christ or we're going to have all these other minds. Because <laughs> there's a lot of them out here. But there's only one him. He said, I am the way, the truth, the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. Okay? He said, if you love me, the Father will love you. See? And we'll come and we'll make our abode with you. He said, this way is the narrow way. Everything else is the wide way. And uh, it is. And so there goes the battle. So we're in a series called Change My Mind. The scripture and the chapter that we spend a lot of time on is Philippians chapter 2. Say that scripture with me. You should get it down even if it's your first son, uh, first time, like you. Got it? Come on, say this with me. Don't make me jump down and choke you. Got it? Okay, here we go. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. How hard is that? That's not hard to say it, is it? Let's do it again. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. So that's our series. Change my mind. Change my mind to this mind. Now, we're not talking about clones. We're not talking about robots. He wants you to have your personality be you. Your past is who you are. Your life is who you are. Your family is who you are. But there's one way. It's through him, Jesus Christ. He's the way to God the Father. And there is a righteous way and there's an unrighteous way. He wants us to be on that right path in our life. Amen? And he's a good father, much better daddy than I'll ever be. And he's not going to throw you out with the trash. He loves you. Once you put your faith in Christ, he loves you. And you have the chance to really be something special and live for the Lord. Amen. And God will do incredible things in your life, and he will help you. So that's been our series. We're way deep into it now. We're going to pick it up. Here we go. By the way, we've got this for you. we got this for you out front today. Some people have asked me, can, can you get that for us? This is how you think like God thinks according to Proverbs chapter 6. You've got the, he wants our attitude, our words, our touch, our thoughts, our walk, our actions, our heart. 
and there's a right way, and then there's a wrong way. If you want to stick that card on your fridge, you want to stick it maybe in your car somewhere, maybe you got some extra time, you, you stick it somewhere, you can pull it out and look at it from time to time. I know you can do that on your phone, but I'm still old-fashioned enough to like an old card. Amen? And you can feel it and touch it and say, boy, this is what I need. So those are free for you today. And if you're online want some of those, let us know. We'll send them out to you. Amen? We're happy to do it. Go ahead, Roger. We've got to roll, Bubba. Here we go. Let's go to the message today. It's a part two message. I can be happy. Now, come on. It's dark in here. We're all going to go to sleep. Are y'all okay over here? Say. Are y'all dozing on me at all? Say. How many is honest enough to say I'm dozing on you, preacher? Okay, there you go. Come on. Help me now. Help me now. Help me now. If you see that hand go up, just walk over there. Wham! Right upside the head. Here we go. Come on. Let's go. I can be happy. Say that loud with me. I can be happy. Happy. Yeah, but you don't understand. That's because you're not listening. We said you can be happy, but there's an I there. I can't put my name where your name is. You can be happy. No, I can't. Well, you can. Can't. You can. Can't, but you can. Well, I can't. You don't understand. I care less. You can be happy. You're just hard headed. You're just a whiner. You don't want to fight. You don't want to get up. And you say, you're right, I'm tired. I get that. I understand. That's different than saying you can't be happy. I don't argue with that you ain't been hurt. not arguing that you ain't tired. I ain't arguing that it ain't hard. But I am going to argue with you until hell freezes over that you can be happy. But there's a way to get there, and there's a way that you ain't going to get there. The way you ain't getting there is the way you're going. It's pretty pitiful. Let's go this way. Let's see what his way is. Amen? So we started last week. I can be happy. How can I be truly happy according to Jesus Christ? We're let his mind. We're trying to get his mind. What did you say? You're 17? And back here, you're 14? Right there. Okay. We got youngins all over the place here. I get that. But guys, God wants you happy. Okay? And how can I be happy? And these are, these are principles that will stay with you the rest of your life. And they'll help you right now forward. Amen? So here we go. Let's go with it. How can I truly be happy according to Jesus Christ? Here we go, Raj. Let's pick up where we were. i got to review real quick. We get, we, there's eight of them. And the, the setting the table last week and going over three, it took some time. The next five is going to go once we get these reviewed again. Number one. Jesus speaking to a multitude, he said, be poor in spirit. Say that with me, be poor in spirit. And immediately we go, like, what the heck is that? Well, I'm glad you asked. He said, blessed, that's our word. When you see the word blessed, it's the word happy. Y'all understand that? When you speak a blessing over somebody, it's actually you're speaking well words into their life or good words or happy words. So the word blessed Jesus is saying, you can be happy when you're poor in spirit. Yours is the kingdom of heaven. What does that first one mean? I can be happy. The first one means this. I must be humble. If I'm humble, I'll be happy. Say that with me. If I'm humble, I'll be... One more time. If I'm humble, I'll be happy. What does that mean? If I'm arrogant, if I'm full of myself instead of full of him. See, poor in spirit means you are low in your spirit... And you're big in his spirit. You see how that is? Instead of you being all big on you, you big on him. And me and Norbert, the architect, had a big talk the other day. And what's the difference between that and confidence, you know? Well, one is of yourself. Okay? You can believe in your gifting. You can believe in your abilities and all that. But you give him the credit. See the difference, yes or no? You're big on him. Anything that you are, you thank him for it. And that's real confidence. Because now you're not standing in just your ability. You're standing in his ability and gifting that he's given you. So that's number one. You want to be happy? Be humble. Say that with me. If you want to be happy, be what? One more time. If you want to be happy, be what? Well, I don't like being humble. Guess what? Then you don't like being happy. Yeah, but you like having your way. Well, you can have your way. You're just not going to be happy. And other people are going to see you ain't happy. They're going to know you ain't happy. And behind your back, they're going to talk and say, he ain't happy. You can be happy, but it's going to take, according to Jesus Christ, the mind of Christ is going to be required to be what? 
humble. Humble. Remember the scripture, let this mind be in you, which is also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but he made himself of no reputation. Okay? He took upon him a form of a servant. He was made in the likeness of men. And being found in fashion as a man, he what? He humbled himself. <laughs> and then became obedient unto death, death of the cross. Humility is required. That's number one. Got it? By the way, on that list of wrong things to do, the number one thing that comes out in Proverbs chapter 6 that we studied is pride. Number one. So here we are again. The number one thing that's going to be required to have the mind of Christ, to have happiness, is humility. Got it? Say. We're good on that one? Number two. Let's review real quick. Number two. Mourn over your sin. Wow. Look at the scripture. Happy are you that mourn, for they shall be comforted. And there's no doubt this could be talking about a lot of things. But, guys, when you look at the scriptures, when you look at them carefully, if you want to truly be happy, it ain't about crying every time something bad happens to you. That can't be what this is saying. Okay? It is saying certainly when you mourn and you have hard times in your life, sure, when you love the Lord and honor Him, there's no doubt that the Holy Spirit will be there with you and He's going to comfort you and He's going to help you. Got it? Yes or no? But if you want to be happy, you need to mourn over your sin. You don't just mourn when somebody dies. You don't just mourn when something bad happens. Because something bad's happening every day in your life and in my life. And we can mourn right there. And we need to get to the place in our life where if we want to be happy, we're not going to be happy with the crap we're doing. Yes or no, amen. And that includes me. Got it? So mourn over your sin and you'll be comforted. Nothing God likes better. Nothing that a parent likes better, a daddy or a mama likes better, is a son or a daughter that's been wayward or really screwed up when they come to them and say, Daddy, Mama, help me. I messed up. Help me, please. I'm sorry. What parent would turn away from a kid like that? Yes or no, amen, say. No parent that has any kind of heart. We would love for our kid to come. Yes or no, amen. And that's how God is. You will be happy. You will be happy when you mourn over your sin and you have a father that's not kicking you in the teeth but saying, wow, I'm so glad you came to the table. Amen? I'm so glad you brought your mess to the table and we could sit at this table, you and me, and we could just we could have some time together and, and, and talk to you a little bit and have that time of prayer. Whatever, however it is you do that, that's fine. Just be real and honest with him. Amen? Number three, third thing we learned about happiness last week. Is this boring you on how to be happy? It's different than you hear in the books that you'll buy. If you'll take my course, you'll be happy. You give me $99, you'll be happy. You know, or the preachers on TV, you send your big money, your seed money, you'll get happiness. I know one thing, he's getting a lot of money. Happiness just can't be bought, my brother. Happiness is going to be worked at. You're going to have to work to be happy. This takes work to humble yourself. Yes or no, amen? It takes work to see your life, to look at it, to say this is, this is mess, man. Deal with it. Amen? Number three, how are you going to be happy? Say it with me. Be what? Me. Now, that's another confusing word. Meek sounds like weak. Meek sounds like weak. That's why I love it when men come to church. I've got coaches all around you this morning. How many, some shape or form, fellas, you coach something in your life? Let me see some hands. Something you've coached in your life. Let me see some hands. Look at all these coaches all around you. That, let's thank the Lord for them. Come on. Come on. I love that. I love that. When you coach, you have to kick tail. When you coach, you have to upset people. I'm sorry, that's the way it is. When you coach, you have to learn to deal with winners and losers, whiners and achievers. You have to do it. I love it when men come to church. I love that. Amen? Because I'm, I'm telling you guys, this is something we need. We need. We need meekness. We've been out there doing our thing, and we're strong, and we're this and that. But guys, we need meekness. Meekness is not weakness. You saw a lot of hands go up from a lot of guys in this room 
that are strong guys, whether they've coached or whether they haven't. You've got a lot of strong men here. So meekness doesn't mean weak. Say that with me. Meekness doesn't mean what it means. Blessed are the what? Meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Just reviewing real quick, meekness means strength. Say it with me. Meekness means, one more time, meekness means, but strength under what? Under control. Under control. <laughs> That's a strong person who can beat the snot out of you but chooses not to. Amen, say. Who can be with a girl, fellows, and you can take advantage of her, but you choose not to, even though you want to. Did you hear what I just said? See, that's a strong fellow who will respect do you see meekness or not? Say, meekness, and yes, for fellows, ladies, listen, all of us, it's meekness is when we have every right to lose our temper. We don't. We keep it in check. We go for a walk. Meekness, though, doesn't solve its problems by going to the bar or to the bottle or to the drugs. You see how meekness is huge in your life? Say, oh man, I want the mind of Christ. Here's what he did. He, the Bible says, look to Jesus, the Bible says, the author and finisher of your faith, who for the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross, despising the shame. And he's now sat down at the right hand of God the Father. See, if you're meek, you'll look back over your life and you'll go, wow, look at that. Look what the Lord helped me with this. And whoop, that could have been a ditch. And he helped me here. Whoop. And all of a sudden, this is how you're going you're gonna to live your life. You're going to go, wow, God has blessed me so much. Amen. To be meek, to be more self-controlled. Now, self doesn't mean you're doing it, but somebody has to make decisions, guys. So you are going to have to make that decision if you want the mind of Christ. Now let's move forward. Roger's flashing, and we're still on last week's message. Here we go. He should be flashing, right? Here we go. Number four, here we go, new territory. How can I be happy? How can I be happy? Desire to do right. Say that with me. Desire to. But wait a minute. So if I'm humble, mm -hmm. if you mourn over your sin, mm -hmm. he's going to help you. Number three, if I have my strength, my passions, my anger, my whatever it might be under control. Mm -hmm. See, you're already setting yourself up for number four. A lot of people, they become a Christian or the church tries to get people to, you just need to do right, cut your hair, wear this, wear that. Read this verse every day. And we wonder why the people are going nuts and they can't live the Christian life. It's because, wait a minute, humble yourself, wait a minute, deal with sin in your life, learn how to do that, wait a minute, be meek, strength under control. And it's amazing how then you can desire to do the right thing a lot better. Did I lose you? Got it? What's the scripture say? Jesus speaking. This ain't me. You don't think I come up with this. Son, I didn't come up with this. Okay, I fought this for years. Here we go. Blessed, Jesus speaking, are happy, are they, say it with me, that do what? Hunger and what? Thirst for or after righteousness, for they shall be what? They'll be happy. You'll be happy. You'll be filled. You'll be content. You'll have a great life. Don't ever feel sorry for me. Pastor Clark, I feel sorry for him. He's the pastor. He don't get to live no life and have no fun. Are you kidding me? Listen, I have a great life. I've got the best life. Nobody has a better life than I have, period. doesn't matter. I'm happy. I want you to live life like that. I want you to see your life. I want you to argue with me. When, uh -uh, I'm happier than you're happy. Good. Amen. Let's take a quick poll. How many would say, I'm pretty happy. Let me see some hands. I'm pretty happy. There we go. Put your hand down. Because some of you are lying. I got your hand down real quick. Here we go. The Bible says, you know, it says hunger and thirst after righteousness. It says there's a key here, desire to do right. I didn't say just do right. 
Desire to do right. You want to be happy? Desire to do right. Well, I do right. Desire to do right. Delight yourself in the Lord, and he'll give you the desires of your heart. You start to humble yourself, see your life, not judging other people, looking at your own life, mourn of your own mess. Strength under control. Bridle that mouth of yours instead of talking about somebody like a dog. Amen? Say, I ain't going to do that. Okay? And then you start desiring to do the right thing. True happiness comes from doing right, not wrong. Say that with me. I'm going to be famous. Here we go. True happiness comes from doing not. I'm not saying wrong don't feel good. I'm not saying, fellas, on your date or whatever, you disrespect the girl and that kind of stuff, and you touch her and you do all this kind of mess that you shouldn't be doing. Listen, I'm not saying it doesn't feel good. It doesn't please the Lord. See, you got your desire, but he didn't get his. You got your thing, but he didn't get you. And he loves you. And he has the best for you. And you don't know it as you're doing whatever you're doing. You're screwing up his best for you. Isn't that crazy? Yes or no? It's a different way to think. People say, you Christians are crazy. That's fine. Spell my name right. Gary with two R's. This is the right way to live life. The desire is birthed that us at salvation. This desire to do right is birthed at salvation, but it's grown and nourished by water from the Word of God. You take the Word inside of you. That's why we have Bible studies. That's why we'll give you a free Bible today. We'll go out to the right side or left, wherever it's at out there, but you can get a Bible today, one that you can understand. We will help you go through the Scriptures. We, try to want, we want you to be happy. We want you to learn God's Word. God's Word tells us what's right to do, not what's wrong to do. You hear me or not? You don't believe that Bible full of all that man. I believe it. I believe it's right for my life. Amen? Fill your heart with it. Fill your heart with it. Oh, taste and see. Say that scripture. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Oh, there's our word. Happy is the who. Man or woman that trusts in who. Are you hearing me today? Am I driving you up the wall already? It's dark, you're loud, it's dark in here. Why can't you be quiet, Pastor? Keep it coming, baby. It's coming right at you, sweetie pie. I love that. Thank you for encouraging me. Don't cheer me on now. Come on. I can be happy. Let's go quick. It was a miracle I got past that one that fast. Number five, be merciful. Do you see, this is the mind of Christ. You know what the word mercy means? It means price paid. Say that with me. Price paid. Has God been merciful to you? Did he pay the price for your sin? Are you going to hell, yes or no? No, he took your hell on you. He paid the price. He's saying, you be merciful. Now, what's that mean? You got a little bit better understanding now? You be merciful. Let's look at what it says. Blessed, there's our word happy, 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 happy. Happy are the what? Are the who? The merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. I can be happy. What does that mean altogether? Well, the word means price paid. We said that already. That's what the word means. You know what mercy says? Here's what it says. Mercy says no to a spirit of condemnation and vengeance. You think right now you're going to be happy if you condemn somebody that's hurt you or done wrong. You think you'll be happy if you can get even with them, get vengeance. God's Word says you'll truly be happy if you don't do what you're thinking about doing to them. And you'll remember what I did for you. Let all the bad things you've done, think about that. Let them be stripes on the back of Jesus. And maybe the thing you're thinking about getting even and hurting somebody, maybe you won't do that. You will instead be merciful. You understand? You think people are happiest when they're vengeful and angry, or you think they're more happy when they're merciful and forgiving? Don't you think merciful people and forgiving people are probably happier people in the world, yes or no? Sure you do. Even the world would say that. 
<coughs> this isn't rocket scientist, rocket science. Mercy says no to the devil because that's who wants you to be vengeful. That's who wants you to do the wrong thing. That's who wants you to hurt people with your mouth and be a terrorist. That's what I call people that talk about people like dogs. You're a terrorist. You're also weak. You hide. You're pathetic. Quote me. Who said that? Pastor Gary. We're horrible. You know who's awesome? People who don't do that. People who are merciful. Amen? I love that. Satan's the accuser of the brethren. That's what it is when you don't have mercy. That's what it looks like. But you know what mercy says? Say it with me. Mercy says this. Say it loud. Jesus said it to Peter this way. Get behind me, Satan. That's what mercy says. Mercy says it this way. You ain't my daddy no more. Get out of my life. You want to cuss? You like to cuss? How about stop you cussing? But if you just have to cuss, how about cuss the devil? If you just have to cuss somebody. I'm all right with that because he's cussed already. He's cursed already. You hear me or not say. And he's trying to get in your life and screw your life up. And there's a battle going on for that mind, guys. Are y'all hear me or not? Am I losing you? We're doing the mind of Christ, but we're also doing the happy. They're the same. This is a famous quote of mine. The most miserable people I've ever known are those who are bitter and consumed with themselves. Who said that? I did. I think I'm going to be in a dictionary one day. Most bitter people. And by the way, I've spent most of my life with Christians. Let that be. Let that, put that in your pipe and smoke it a little bit. You can serve the Lord, you can do, and Jesus is going to say, I never knew you. You didn't look like anything like I look like. You didn't do anything like I do. Oh, outwardly it was happening, but inside are dead men's bones. And you stink. Does that sound familiar, Scripture? It's a big deal, isn't it, right here? Are we learning or not? Say not only are we learning how to be happy, we're learning how to be a better church today. Amen? Say. Yeah, praise the Lord. We're learning how to be a better church. It's a better church right here. I'll take this church right here. If you like yours where you came from, you can have it. Okay? I want this kind of church right here. Right here. We love Jesus. We love people. We bank it on Him. We're going to be happy. Not going to flop like a chicken. Not going to put on a show up here. I want you to be strong. I want us to whip Satan's tail. I want to do it in your home. I want you to see it in your home. I want you to see victory in your home. Say, so we're still coaching, baby. We want to win. Y'all hear me or not? Say. And we have won because we know the Lord. But why not live like it? Say. Why not? Why not? He's at the right hand of God the Father right now where he makes intercession for you and me. But I can't. You can. You can be happy. Yeah, but she left me, or he left me, or he raped me, and it's horrible what happened to you, but you can be happy. Don't let Satan steal your life. You have a life that's worth something. You matter. You're not garbage. And you can be somebody, and you are somebody. You just don't know it, man, or ma'am. It's powerful to me. Y'all hear me or not? I get loud, I'm going to have another spell if I don't watch it. Here we go. I've been trying to be calm today. Have y'all noticed? Son, if you think I'm loud today, you ought to come on a regular day. I'm being nice. Here we go. Come on. Number six. We got eight. We're almost there. We can do it. We can do it. We can do it. Be pure in spirit. These are the Beatitudes. They're famous, man. They're famous in the Bible. The Beatitudes. This be my attitude. The problem is we don't know what it means half the time. We're trying to get it down there to where we can understand. It doesn't mean that Jesus spoke in things we couldn't understand. No, that, it's not his fault. <laughs> he talked to the people. I'm sure he explained <laughs> everything he said pretty clear. But we have the scripture and, you know, if everything he said would have been written, the volumes of the world, the libraries of the world couldn't contain the books the Bible says. So pastors and teachers and people like me and people like you, we have to just study and try to make it clear to us. Amen? That's what we're trying to do. That's all we're doing. What's this next one? 
blessed, or what's our word? Are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. What does that mean in the realm of happiness? So I can be happy. The word pure literally means clean or clear. The word pure means clean or clear. So what does this mean? It's a blessing to have your sins forgiven. It's a blessing to have your sins forgiven. So blessed are the pure in heart. Blessed are those who've had their sins forgiven and removed as far as the east is from the west. Happy's the person that's had his sins removed as far as the east is from the west. That should be a happy person. Happy person. Not going to hell. I'm saved. I'm going to heaven. My name's in the Lamb's Book of Life. I should be a happy person. That's not that difficult. This is the only way to have a pure heart. only way to have a pure heart is to put your faith in Christ. He's the only one that can wash away sin, period. He has power over sin and death. It also is a blessing to confess your sins regularly. It is a blessing. It's a happy time to get that crap off of your back. Oh, I can't do that. What will he think? Here's what he's going to think. Good, it's about time. You know what God's going to say when you confess sins? I'm happy for you. Will you forgive me, Lord? I'm happy to do that. You belong to me. You're my child. I love you. Doesn't mean we just blatantly continue in sin. There are struggles that most of us have. But the bottom line is, it's a happy day and a happy time when we confess our sins. Y'all hear me or not? Blessed is that man. My advice, keep a short sin list. My advice to me. And I still struggle. I hope you're hearing me say that a lot. Don't, don't leave here thinking, well, Clark, he just got this all down. No, what I've got down is this. I've got down what I'm teaching you today. What I don't have down is living it. I fight daily. And some days I don't do well. I'm sorry you've got a pastor like that. But if most pastors were honest, they would say the same thing I just said. I'm not giving you a license to sin and just keep doing wrong, but guys, reality is, is that we are sinners. And we still sin. Other churches will teach you because you still sin, you'll go to hell. If because you sin this week, how many would be going to hell today? Let me see some hands. Aren't you glad he's a better daddy than you are? I sure am. Don't let sin mount and abound in your life. i got to quit, Roger, but we're not quitting to the end. I don't give a hoot. Say this famous verse, awesome verse. I ought to memorize it. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all. Is that not a happy person? See the difference? See what I'm saying? Some of these you like, wow, that's hard. Wow, that's hard. We came across an easier one, didn't we? Confess your sins. Be thankful that you are. Be happy your sins are forgiven as far as the east is from the west. Amen? Come on. I can be happy, number seven. Be a peacemaker. Be a peacemaker. What's that mean? I want you to think about it. Am I supposed to hold the sign like the little lady does on Dearborn? I saw her yesterday. God bless her. I mean, she's out there. You've got to give her credit. I just don't know what it means. Does that mean I'm supposed to get together and smoke weed? What does that mean? Does that mean I'm supposed to be a liberal now? Is that what that means? Does that mean I'm not supposed to stand for my country? What does that mean? I don't know what it, what it means. I know this, though. He told me to be a peacemaker. Look at this scripture. Happy, blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the what? Children of God. Children of God. Ch can I hold a sign up? Is that what's going to be? I'll hold me a sign up, and now people will know I'm a child of God. Is that what that means? I don't think so. We're called to make disciples. This is what Gary believes this means. We are called to make disciples. Share the gospel of Jesus Christ with other people. You will be happy if you're not ashamed of Jesus. You will be happy if you fulfill the role he has for you in your life. He has called all of us to let our light so shine before men that they can see our good works and glorify his name. 
it's, and the Father, rather, which is in heaven. We are the ambassadors and representatives of the Lord. Well, I'll let an angel do it. They're not doing it. I'll let a preacher do it. God help you. They're all going to go to hell. People need people. Say that with me. People need, this town needs you. I'm one of the people in the town. But this town needs you. Port Charlotte needs you. Venice needs you. This whole area, Rotunda, we need you. We need you to be the ambassador. Give the people the good news. That's what a peacemaker is. That's real peace. The greatest peacemaker is helping people have peace with God. Did I lose you on that? I'll help people have peace in Washington. Good luck. It's all crazy. The only peace you can really help somebody truly have is peace with God. And you have the answer. His name is Jesus. Give the people the good news. They're going to know you're a child of God. Peacemakers are children of God. I care for you. I love you. You matter to me. That's what I do here on Sunday. I want you to know you matter. You have value. I want you to come to peace with God today. You hear me? Be one of those, man. Give the people the good news that they have a pardon awaiting them if they put their faith and trust in Jesus Christ. The who? The Prince of Peace. Help me, people. The Prince of Peace. We ought also to be ready to make peace with our brother, by the way. Y'all hear me? If you're a child of God and you got out with your brother, if you're a child of God and you're angry with somebody, if you're a child of God and you've been forgiven but you won't forgive somebody, if you're a child of God and you run your mouth about people, God help you. You are not a happy person. You're not a happy person. You're a saved person, and you can't even make peace. But you can accept it. Listen, guys, that's not happiness. Capiche? You knew I'd speak Italian after a while. There we go. I can be happy. Last one. We did it, Raj. Number eight. You want to be happy? Be persecuted. What? What? You want to be happy? Be persecuted. But wait a minute. Not for your stupidity, but for your what? Let's look at the scripture. Happy! Are they which are persecuted for righteousness sake, for theirs is the kingdom of God. Wow. I can be happy. How, Jesus? This sounds about as strange as when you told me to mourn. And I'll be happy. Keep looking. Just think with me as I wrote these things down. Because God is holy and righteous, when we suffer for righteousness' sake, we're suffering for Him. Don't you think about that. What are you going to get, God? A tie? Why not love Him with your heart, soul, and mind? And where the rubber hits the road, the rubber hits the road. Why not not be ashamed of him? Why not stand for him? Why not love him regardless? And see if you aren't the most happy person you've ever known. Quit avoiding the conflict. Conflict's around. Don't be the troublemaker. <laughs> Don't be that guy. Be the peace. I get that. But listen, Jesus took the ultimate beating for us. So I think when we can take a beating in his name... He identifies with us in a way, and we identify with him in a way that is, a, is very, it's, it's, it's an unusual relationship. Did you hear me or not? If you took a poll, who would you think Gary Clark would say was the greatest Christian he ever knew? Who would you think I would say? Person. Mama. 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 My mother was beat by my stepdad. My mother was murdered, son. My mother was shot six times by my stepdad. She was the best Christian woman I ever knew. I believe mama's last words, I believe it, as she was looking at that gun, and it happened quick. She's getting ready for bed. With a little sink I used to wash my own face in. I believe her last words were, you can't threaten me with heaven. 
Don't you want to be that kind of person? Don't you want to have a faith that's so solid, no matter what happens, I'm going to be with the Lord. Isn't that what happiness is, yes or no? Think about it. The interesting thing about persecution, that's reviling, evil speaking, it goes on to say, is that there's no good feeling for you. When you're persecuted, there's no good feeling for you. What does that mean? That means when you do the right thing and it's the right thing to do the right thing and you're doing the right thing because it's the right thing because God says it's the right thing and we're going to do the right thing. If you're persecuted because of it, God gets the credit, not you. And you know how happy you are or you can be when you know you didn't do it out of pride. You just did it because it was right. And he gets the credit. Did I lose you on that kind of spooky thinking? Amen. God's the ultimate judge of my righteousness. If he knows I'm holy and right, it certainly must bring a great deal of glory. And he does get all the credit. Amen. In my life. So I'm left clinging only to him through persecution. I'm just clinging to him. That is true happiness. Amen. Got to quit, Rog. It's difficult to suffer for righteousness sake and be happy. But once you've experienced the closeness with the Lord at a moment like this, you tend to crave the what? Fire. You can't mess with somebody <laughs> who's been persecuted and come out the other side. <laughs> once you know you can make it, you know you can make it. Here's the thing. You all can make it. I have him. Y'all hear me or not? Don't put your confidence in this world. Put your confidence in Jesus Christ, and you can be happy. Let's thank the Lord. It's 10.01. That was a long message. That was long. It was worth it. It was worth it. Come on, get on up. Them donuts are wait. We got plenty of donuts. We donut people. I think we started donuts in this town. We know donuts. God bless you today. Pretty good crowd in July. Bend your neck around and just look a little bit. I just want you to see how a few of the, you know, we got a decent crowd here today. What does that mean? You're in a growing church. We had the highest attendance to our knowledge, and we're still in COVID, aren't we? Yes or no? We, yeah, we, I mean, you know what I'm saying. They're telling us we are, we ain't, we are, we ain't, we are, and people are scared. We get it. We understand. It's a weird time. Here's the point. Best July we ever had. Let's thank the Lord. Best July we ever had. You can't do that. It's in the record books now, baby. We did it. And we did it by preaching his word, by not lying. Amen. Let's go. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Lord, for an awesome day. Thank you for this message from your book. Help us, Lord, to eat it up with a spoon. Chew on it. Help us to be happy people. Help us to know we can't be happy by just saying, I'm going to be happy. Help us to know it's going to take some work. Jesus, you laid it out for us. Clear, clear path. Help us have your mind. We can get there. We can do this. We can do all things through Christ who strengthens us in Jesus' name. With heads bowed, I've been talking about it the whole service. I started out talking about it. If you died today, do you know you'd go to heaven? Jesus Christ is your only hope. There is no other way. All other ways are lies. Somebody's lying to you. God had one son. His name was Jesus. You might say, Clark, that's your opinion. That is the word of God. Anybody else that takes a Bible and twists it, they're twisting it. It's Jesus Christ. He saved me. He saved my drunk mama. He saved a house full of crazy people in this room. He'll save you. He loves you to death. He died for you on the cross. What do you need to do? Here's what the Bible says. If you, you, you will confess with your mouth Jesus and believe in your heart God raised Jesus from the dead, you will be saved. If you'll reach out to him today in humility, Tell him in your heart best you know how you believe in him. He'll come into your life and he will save you. He'll walk with you. He will help you. But you, you have to make that move. Can I lead you in that prayer right now? Can we do it together? I just want to be a help to you. Let's pray together. Lord Jesus, I know I am a sinner. I have sinned. I have done it. And I'm confessing it to you because you're God. I'm not. Pastor Gary ain't. 
You are. And so, Lord, I ask you to forgive me. And Jesus, I want you to know, today, the last Sunday in July, I put my faith in you, Jesus. I believe you're God's only son. I believe you died on the cross and rose from the dead, and I believe you love me. I believe I matter to you and that I'm not garbage to you. And Jesus, you know I don't understand it all, but I do know this. I'm not putting my faith in a preacher to save me. I'm not putting my faith in a church to save me. I'm not putting my faith in myself to save me. I'm putting my faith in you, Jesus, to be my Savior. And I do that, oh, humbly, in Jesus' name. With heads bowed, how many would say, Pastor Gary, I said that prayer with you today.